system was particularly slow. And while that may be true, as we see in normal criminal cases, the clogging in the courts and in the prisons, we also know that because of the fight against corruption, most people have said that financial crime cases have also been moving at a slow pace. So the Chief Justice of Nigeria constituted a high-powered committee to monitor the pace of high-profile financial crime cases in the courts across Nigeria. That committee is one year old now. And uh, through a workshop that was organized in Abuja, the committee is trying to evaluate its own job and see how much that has impacted on the pace of justice dispensation in high-profile financial crime cases. That is our focus on the scale today. I'm Femi Okewu, thanking you for being part of the program today. How many times have we said it on this program that justice dispensation generally lies on a tripod, a tripod of investigation, prosecution, and the trial? But in Nigeria, we all jump at the trial and look less at the investigation and the quality of prosecution. The monitoring committee to look at the pace of high-profile financial crime cases have seen that all these must come to play very effectively. Financial crime cases are to be dispensed with very quickly in courts. Like I said earlier in the program, we all know that the pace of justice dispensation is generally slow, and we see that in the number of awaiting trial cases in courts. But the greater frustration for a government that wants to fight corruption in high places is when a big man, or as they call them, or uh, politically exposed persons are brought to court, and the cases are hardly dispensed with in 10, 15 years. And so the monitoring committee against high profile crime cases in court has been doing an evaluation. We are going to let you into the speeches of the workshop that was also organized, jointly organized by the Center for Social Legal Studies in Abuja. And we give you an insight into what that committee has achieved so far and where it intends to go, even with the administration of Criminal Justice Act, which helps to dispense justice very quickly in Nigeria. Enjoy the program. The workshop is part of the work of the Corruption and Financial Cases Trial Monitoring Committee, a body set up by the Chief Justice of Nigeria to assess the pace at which high-profile financial crime cases are determined in the nation's courts. Corruption, no doubt, has made a mess of our judicial process, and it is in the enlightened interest of the judiciary and the entire legal profession to restore this confidence in the process. We must reverse the prevailing perception that the judicial process is corrupt, ineffective, inefficient, and susceptible to manipulation by the high-profile defendants and politically exposed persons. It will be called that my Lord, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Honorable Justice Walter Samuel Kano, an organ GCOIN, in his speech, at the special session of the Supreme Court of Nigeria to mark the commencement of 2017-2019 legal year, emphasize the concerns expressed by members of the public on the snail-like pace in which corruption cases were being heard or determined by the courts. Consequently, the CGN directed the heads of court to designate in the various jurisdictions special courts solely for hearing and speedy determination of corruption and financial crime cases. The monitoring committee, that's my committee, was inaugurated in November 2017, that's about a year ago, or a year ago, by the Honorable Chief Justice. To tour the six geographical zones of the country to assess the progress of corruption cases pending in those special courts with a view to ensuring speedy allocation of cases. The committee which I chair 
is proof positive that the National Judicial Council is making an unprecedented attempt to make the anti-corruption fight a front banner issue. The courts have given favorable interpretations and have so far rejected arguments of defense lawyers aimed at striking down important provisions of the act. Through various progressive judgments, the courts have restored the integrity of the Nigerian criminal justice system. Your lordships have inaugurated what the Supreme Court in Olisametu and Federal Republic of Nigeria rightly described as a new dispensation in the administration of criminal justice. I'm quoting what the Supreme Court said. Only a few days ago, the chairman of the EFCC addressed the press conference at which he disclosed that several cases have been concluded and significant amount of assets recovered. My Lord Honorable Justice Garadima has also reeled out the increasing number of cases that the courts are turning out. However, some observers have pointed out that while several convictions are being recorded, only a few of these are high profile in the sense of involving politically exposed defendants. The fear, therefore, has been expressed that the modest success so far achieved in implementing the ADJA may be under threat. It was in order to overcome these challenges that the Chief Justice of Nigeria, about a year ago, established the Corruption and Financial Crimes Cases Trial Monitoring Committee, CONTRIMCO, and directed the establishment of specialized courts to concentrate mainly on corruption and financial crimes cases. This workshop will therefore consider some of the persistent challenges to the smooth implementation of the ACJA and other accountability laws. Most of these delays are hinged on the um, people usually, the defense, usually uh, try to rely on Section 36 of the Constitution, which guarantees the right to fair hearing. And uh, sincerely, as trial judges, you can, it is difficult to ignore that provision when the defense call it in aid because the constitution, as we know, is a grand law and you can never ignore it even by invoking any other statutory provision. So why Co-Trico is doing a good job in association with Center for Social and Legal Studies they should also try to approach this from the uh, side of the legislature because something has to be done about either outrightly amending that pro the, the provision pertaining to the right to fair hearing. Or it should be tinkered with in, in order to allow sufficient latitude so that people don't have blanket reliance on it to truncate uh, criminal trials. Those who made contributions at the workshop are principal personalities who have been directly involved in the trials of high-profile financial crimes. They lamented that the slow pace and lack of diligent trials give the impression that the judicial process are sometimes compromised whenever a high-profile or politically exposed person is involved. I thought it was very important to talk about special skills need to be developed to harness the myriad difficulties encountered during the trials. The judge must trust me. You must be more than uh, you must be a psych counselor. You must be nice. You, must be, you know, you must be. You know, you have, you you adopt all manner of rules just to be able to push through and sit long hours and prepare to have no life and no weekends. <laughs> So I think it is pertinent before we go into the substance 
to understand the depth, the real cru crucial um, factors that we have to bear in mind. And what I thought was there was a day to do something, anything, to curtail the creeping effects of uh, corruption in Nigeria. And so what I did was to bring out a chat. I went to the latest Transparency International report on, on Africa, and I, I saw who was who and who, but I, I tried to pick our neighbors. And if you look at 2017, it has a bearing on 2018, because as of 2018, we're still on 2017. Ghana was 81, Benin 85, Togo 115, and all the rest. And when you come to Nigeria, we were 148 on that list. And it was really highly disconcerting that Nigeria was perceived, at least by the Transparency International, as being more corrupt than our neighbors. If you look at Benin, Benin Republic, Ghana, uh, and then we're right at the end. And I think that's a sobering thought for all of us. In the paper, I brought out the reasons for case flow management and resistance, and I'm not going to go into that. Um, I think it is going to be in the paper. And of course, it is very important that there be an ongoing judicial commitment. Uh, leadership is very essential. Um, judges have a central role. Um, initial um, duties of the chief judge to activate and sustain ch um, case management responsibilities are paramount to the success of any case management um, design. I also talked briefly about the objectives of the criminal case flow management, and I'm not going to go into that, just what everyone here is all trying to achieve. And then I came to the principles of the case flow management. It was easy for me to talk about this because I had done it in a paper at, in 2008. And it, it was very easy for me to just tick up those things that had been done for my suggestions. So of course we know criminal case flow management includes all pre-trial phases, um, events pre-trial and events that increasingly follow trials um, and also establishing reasonable early court intervention which is um, what uh, my chief judge just talked about, establishing meaningful events, establishing reasonable time frames for events, reasonable time frames for disposition, and creating a judicial system that is predictable. Uh, of course, um, and I want to dwell heavily on one part that is still not yet here, but I, I was very excited to see in a new practice direction by the Honorable Chief Judge of FCT that we do have that um, pre-trial, which is fascinating. I think we're the only ones uh, in Nigeria so far that's done that amazing, amazing, amazing uh, innovation. Um, so I just want to get quickly to that. We want to commend the Honorable Chief Judge of MCT for that. I did bring the practice direction you saw there to show, to wave and say, we did it. Uh, so, okay, the principles on case flow management is on the paper. But one thing that I want us to know, um, the heads of court must keep current with the successes and failures of other courts and know how, to, of course, to leverage external resources, current research, uh, explore skillful continuous education, and understand that effective case flow is a moving target. It doesn't stay. Um, while the underlying principles are constant, so are change and projects to bring about improvements. Techniques that were once innovative and effective do not work forever, and they require constant monitoring. A major factor is time. The judiciary is no longer in that extreme state of conservatism where nobody cared about the tide of changes, and therefore, no steps taken to respond to the demand of the court users in terms of what, of what value expectations from them are being satisfied through the adjudicative system. We continuously trust through partnership with the MacArthur Foundation and many others to bring into place various practice directions, in fact, both in criminal and civil proceedings in order to restore the integrity of the justice delivery system in this country. 
recently had the opportunity of enthroning panels of judges and magistracy, each chairman and two members, to declog the overwhelming dockets before both the judges and the magistracy. First, addressing the non bailable offenses at the high court level, where you find people staying in prison custody five years above. Now, at the time of inauguration, I did say, a false accusation has no date of completing investigation because there is nothing to investigate in the first place. So what that means is that continued stay in custody to satisfy the whims of caprices of certain powers that be, who could stimulate wrongly the process of the court in order to have people behind bars. I said the judiciary's tradition of bending backward in the name of exhibiting judicial maturity, exercising restraint because this is a hostile or high profile accusation and it is within the public domain, is being taken to the extreme, to the extent that it's a neglect of the fact that people could be there without any iota of evidence yet having capital offenses placed on their necks. Now, I have taken the bull by the horns. I had instructed, as part of the terms for those panels, that they should not bother. Any person in prison from three years above, without trial, they should discharge the person once they give date and the prosecution has not come. Now, it's either we confront the situation, regardless of whatever anybody is saying. We have, I've said the police should take their positions. Once there is such discharge and they arrest, we are giving them two weeks within which to present their witnesses. Otherwise, we dismiss the matter. The, the goal is to block those holes where innocent citizens are placed behind bars without justifiable uh, reason. So this, and I'm happy to say, the report I'm getting is quite encouraging. On the part of the civil matters, we are already in the process of the settlement week, where all civil matters will have go to go through the process of alternative dispute resolution mechanism. This will have the effect of reducing the burden on judges and also expediting the process of justice delivery within the realm of civil matters. I am calling meaningful Nigerians to associate with us in this mission so that we restore the dignity of justice delivery in Nigeria. I thank you for this opportunity. You will discover that many of the cases that were, that led to recoveries by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission didn't go to court. Some, in some of them offenses were compounded, you know, and um, the reason why bargaining is sometimes not so popular is because um, uh, it has to involve conviction, some form of conviction. That's the general understanding. But I've taken the view for my study of the Australian Criminal Justice Act, plea bargaining necessarily need not result in conviction. Nigerians are averse to that. They want a conviction for those people who are surrendering their uh, property. Uh, that, that, that is, um, that's a view. Okay. There, that's a view. You know, there are those who believe that you can even get more uh, assets returned if, you, if, if there's a promise of not convicting. For convicting. That is why the, ACJ, um, the EFCC Act provides for compounding of offenses, which does not have to lead to conviction. You know, so I have interpreted the provisions. If you read my, my commentary on the ACG Act, I have made it clear that plea bargaining under the ACG Act does not necessarily have to result in conviction. You can have plea bargaining which does not result in conviction. What's important is to target the assets, is to target the process of crime. And then if investigation is fully done and the suspect knows that there is, no, there, would be, there is not likely to be any escape route. They are more likely to plea bargain. They are more likely to, to
to accept you know, an opportunity to, to get off by returning assets. While we yes. do workshops and seminars like this, yes. what do we say to prosecutors who are the life wire of any successful conviction? Yes, uh, prosecutors, like you rightly said, are the life wire of any successful prosecution. They must recognize that they are not just dealing with the cases at hand. Their decisions affect the society at large. So they should see themselves not merely prosecuting the individuals before them, of course they are prosecuting, but they are also protecting the entire society from crime. They are performing a national function, national service. You know, and then when they see that, then that will you know, lead to greater sense of responsibility, greater commitment. You know, doing more with little, because we know that they are under-resourced. Nevertheless, they can improvise, they can be creative, they can be innovative, they can think outside the box, so as to be able to ensure that you know, the prosecution of cases still go on, notwithstanding the challenges that they face. And finally, yes. what is the target of this seminar? Thank you very much. So the target of this seminar is to begin to discuss the need to fill the gaps in the Administration of Criminal Justice Act. You know, the Federal Capital Territory High Court has already blazed the trail by, by issuing uh, practice directions. Now, at this workshop, we are recommending that other states in the Federation should follow that um, lead that has been provided by the Federal High Court, by Federal Capital Territory High Court. You know, uh, we are going to give to them what we call draft, draft rules, draft administration of criminal justice rules, practice rules, which we believe they can adapt. Just as they adapted the AGJA, they can also adapt these draft rules, and then so that criminal justice system will be more effective and the integrity of criminal justice administration in the country will be restored. That is the scale of justice for you today. I'm sure we've been able to educate you on the things that have been done to hasten the trials of high-profile personalities that have tampered with our phones and uh, what the law or indeed the justice personalities are doing to help make sure that the fight against corruption does not only stay in the, on the streets of Nigeria, it also comes to the justice sector of the nation. We'll see you again with more issues unfolding in the justice sector. I'm Femi Okewo, thanking you for being part of the program. <music>